The subject of urbanization during the Bronze Age is a complex one. When we think of early centers of civilization, we think of ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Indus Valley. However, how to define urbanization has long been a subject of debate, and such definitions may vary depending on the unique circumstances of a particular place. It's generally accepted that for an ancient site to be classified as urban, a high degree of social, political, and economic stratification needs to be identified in the archaeological record. In northwestern Arabia, until around two decades ago, little work had been done there on the concept of urbanization in the Bronze Age. Much of the terrain was inaccessible and ancient sedentary sites were thought to be few and far between and therefore difficult to identify in any case. Modern development in oases also impacted the search for more ancient sites. However, more recent work has greatly supported the idea that during the transition from the Chalcolithic to the early Bronze Age, northwestern Arabia has several socio-economically complex settlements. A new paper published in the journal PLOS One discusses the exciting discovery of a fortified site in the Kaibar oasis called Al Natar. Let's get into it. The oasis of Kaibar in the Saudi Hejaz desert covers an area of around 8 by 7 kilometers and sits at the intersection of three wadis. A wadi is a dry river valley. However, springs and seasonal rains are what make oases particularly fertile. The Kaibar Long Jure archaeological project was launched in 2020 to investigate ancient human occupation in the oasis, which was known to have been inhabited in prehistory. Over almost four years, Years, the team have identified 20,000 archaeological features using remote sensing, field surveys, and test excavations. In the first field season in October 2020, they discovered the site of Al Natar, which then underwent excavations lasting until last February. Investigating the site wasn't easy, since it is covered in basalt blocks dating to the proto-historic period, and a full excavation wasn't a planned part of the project. However, using field surveying techniques, a preliminary part partial map of the archaeological features of the site was created. Eight targeted test excavations were also carried out, which yielded pottery sherds, grinding tools, faunal bones, beads and metal. Pottery sherds were also found during the field surveys. In total, 6,000 pieces of pottery were found and compared to sites in other parts of the oasis. Archaeobotanical and environmental DNA analyses were carried out on a few samples from dump layers, and geomorphologists also tested sedimentary deposits. Although the map of the site is preliminary and more extensive excavations would be needed to complete it, the team are not sure if such an investigation would yield positive results considering the conditions of the site. Al Natar sits to the north of the Kaibar oasis and overlooks the 700 meter wide Wadi al Suwaya. It's approximately 730 meters above sea level and covers 2.5 hectares. A wall with two large towers and a thickness which varies between 3.5 and 6 meters runs along its southern boundary. Unfortunately, due to parts of the wall having collapsed and later structures being muddled in with it, it's not clear if access to the site was from this southern rampart. The site was made up of a necropolis in the west and a residential area to the east. A third area with Possibly a double entrance was also identified on the western side of the settlement. There were also several stone circles in the lower part of the village, as well as an Islamic inscription in the central area. These suggest a partial reuse of the site during the Islamic period, however no diagnostic pottery was found to corroborate this. The residential area was made up of at least 50 quadrangular dwellings with stone foundations or basements, and taller earthen structures on top. Some were isolated and others were connected to each other. They were accessed from either two meter wide curvilinear streets or narrower alleyways. Most buildings are on a north-south axis, but some have a different orientation due to the topography of the site. Only the foundations of the dwellings remain, and these are subdivided into several narrow rooms or corridors. The researchers think this ground or basement floor was for storage, and that the living areas were in floors built above. Considering the thickness of the walls, the dwellings probably had two or three floors and were as tall as eight meters. Traditional Arabian tower houses are constructed in a similar way. Such a house could have accommodated an extended family of 10 individuals. So 
Alnato's population must have been around 500. Radiocarbon testing in the residential area of the site showed the occupation started in the second half of the 3rd millennium BCE and lasted until around the mid-16th century BCE. However, due to the lack of preservation, a proper occupation sequence couldn't be determined. The evidence suggests that the site was in use from the early to middle Bronze Age, but with some disruptions. The western part of the site is taken up by a necropolis dating to the same time period as the residential area. This necropolis is made up of circular megalithic tombs with stepped walls on their exterior and pillars on their interior. A series of earlier tailed tombs and funerary avenues are also in the west and date to the first third of the second millennium BCE. In the centre of the site, two buildings containing four rooms are situated on higher ground. They are similar in layout to the residential buildings, but their location suggests that they were the political centre of the site. To the south of these buildings is a courtyard surrounded by trapezoidal shaped zones marked by large stones. These could be the remains of trapezoidal tombs. The way the rampart and towers are structured suggests that they were built at the same time as the residential area. It's possible that one of the towers was built as a domestic dwelling first before being converted into a defensive structure. Radiocarbon testing of charcoal found within layers below and abutting the rampart corroborates these dates. There's also evidence for a late restructuring of the walls which made them thicker. The authors of the paper think that nomadic groups initially gathered around ecological niches where they built tombs and connected the oases with large funerary avenues. By the second half of the 3rd millennium BCE, these groups had undergone a process of sedentarization, which coincided with the 4.2a climatic event. It's long been thought that this climatic event would have stretched resources and led to social tension. So this process of sedentarization in fortified settlements Arabia was probably a response to that. Al-Natar prospered during the beginning of the second millennium BCE, a time when the climate was better. It's not clear why the site was abandoned, but by 1500 or possibly 1300 BCE, some structures had collapsed or been purposefully filled in. No late Bronze Age Kariya painted ware has been found there either, which would also suggest abandonment prior to that period. So can Al-Natar be considered an early urbanized area in northwestern Arabia? In recent years, several scholars have suggested that urbanization was indeed a feature of northwestern Arabia during the early Bronze Age. Shalu al-Malki and al-Qaid proposed that the walled oases at Taima and Kuraya, along with the evidence of long-distance contacts, intensive agriculture, monumental architecture and increased pottery production, were indicative of urbanization. Another scholar, Luciani, referred to Taima, Kuraya and Kuraiba as urban oases with permanent settlements, complex irrigation and agriculture, and with pottery and metallurgical production. However, since archaeological excavations of residential areas was lacking, and data which would define a precise chronology was limited, it was difficult to classify the area as having undergone urbanization. Now, these excavations at al Natar have helped to provide more information on these two previous discussions regarding urbanization. al Natar lacks an overall settlement plan, but evidence does show intensive production and craft specialization beyond domestic needs. Artifacts point to medium and long distance contacts, as do changes in funerary practice over time. The ramparts indicate centralized authority, and both these and the funerary structures suggest increased social stratification over the years. The walled oases of Taima and Kuraya are similar to al Natar in many ways. However, information on residential context is lacking. The remains of one large building with multiple rooms at Taima does suggest that it had a collective function though. The author suggests that what took place in the northwestern Arabian desert could be classed as low urbanization, with the progressive rise of a central authority and a dominating class long-distance exchanges and intensive local construction and production. The idea of rural complexity was introduced by Suzanne Richard to describe low urbanization in the southern Levant during the early and middle Bronze Age. Similar discussions on how to define the socio-economic changes taking place there at that time have led to much debate over the years. It's possible that the walled oases of northwestern Arabia were influenced by this first urbanization of the southern Levant, considering that there would have been contact between the two regions.
That's it. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Don't forget to hit the like button if you didn't already, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.